Welcome to this teaching where I'm going to talk about fasting. This is part of the series How To. And this is going to be a very practical teaching with some strong testimonies also to really encourage you out there to fast. We need to fast. Fasting is part of our life as a disciple of Christ. And there is so much breakthrough when it comes to fasting. So are you longing for breakthrough in your life? Are you longing to overcome flesh in your life? Then see this teaching about fasting. And again, this is part of a series, How To. So it's a very practical teaching, but of course, I will lay a foundation first. Jesus in Matthew 6, he talked about fasting and he said, when you fast. He don't say if you fast, he say when you fast. A few verses before in Matthew 6, he's saying when you give, and then he talk about giving. And then he say when you pray. And he talk about praying. And then he say when you fast. And he talk about fasting. Jesus did not say when you give, do this and this. When you fa- pray, do this and this. And if you fast, do this and this. He say when. In the church, we talk a lot about giving. We talk a lot about praying. But we don't talk a lot about fasting. Fasting should be part of our Christian walk the same way as praying and giving. What Jesus is saying, he say, when you fast, you fast to God who's in the heaven. Don't fast for people. Don't fast to be shown. Wash your clothes, brush your teeth, set your hair if you have hair. And don't show that you are fasting. But it can also go to extreme where it becomes weird. For example, if you are fasting in a longer period of time, like 40 days or 15 days or 14 days or 40 days or one week, of course, you cannot hide it. You cannot hide it for family and friends. Like try to imagine you're being invited to a wedding and no, no, I, I'm not eating. No, are you good? Yeah, I, I'm okay. I just don't eat. Don't you want anything? No, no, I'm good. If, if you do like this, people start to talk, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with him? Like, why are you not eating? So in that way, it's okay to say that you are fasting. Don't be afraid to say that you are fasting, because otherwise it would be weird. But you fast to God who's in the heaven. And it's a thing between you and God. So you don't have to go and show it. It's not the first thing you come when you go to a house. Hey. I'm fasting. I'm on my 17 days right now. Don't do like that. But again, don't be afraid to talk about it. And this is Satan's tactic. He almost wants us to not talk about fasting. Shh, don't talk about fasting because then you go, don't get any reward. But look at the context. Jesus also said when you give, don't do it like that in front of people. When, when you pray, don't do it in front of people. But we are not afraid to talk about praying and giving. So... Keep it simple, but fast. Fasting is part of our life and we should fast. What is fasting? That is a good question. Some people just say, hey, I fast. I fast from TV. But fasting, uh, keep away from TV is not fasting. But keep away from TV. Throw the hell machine out of your house. I think it's good to do that. I think it's good to take a time where you don't, uh, uh, where you keep away from internet. It's good to take a time to put your telephone away and see God. It's good to take those time, but that is not fasting. You can use other words, but fasting have to do with food. It have to do with abstaining from food and drink. Why? I'm going to explain you in short time, because something is happening physically in your body when you don't eat, when you don't drink. But something is not going to happen physically in your body if you keep away from your TV or you keep away from your telephone. So fasting has to do with food and drink. And there I want to say there is different kind of fasting in the Bible. There is people who we see, the Pharisees, like one day or two days a week. We have Jesus who fasted 40 days. We have the book of Esther where they fasted three days without food and drink. Normally, Keep away from food. You can keep away from food for 40 days. Most healthy people can do that and live 40 days without food. But you cannot do 40 days without drink, of course. You need something to 
drink. In the Bible, we see three days without food and drink. The whole nation did that at the time of, of Esther. Esther. But we also see that Moses was in the presence of God. And he did also not eat and drink for 40 days. Uh, but that was a miracle. But fasting is often keeping away from food over a longer period or taking a shorter time where you keep away from food and drink. I want to say there, there is also the Daniel fast people are talking about where you keep away from meat and milk product and, and you eat salad and fruit instead and don't have any sweet. That is also a kind of fasting, but I'm not going to talk about that fast here. It's not a fast I know so much about, but I know about this fast. The fasting where you keep away from food over a short or longer time period and keep away from drink over a short time period. I want to say there, if you keep away from food, if you fast for 40 days without food, you have to understand that 40 days, 40 days fasting on water is not the same as the time of Jesus when they fasted 40 days on only water. Why? Because the living water they was drinking, the water, the, the rain water that came down, the water came down from the mountain, the water they gathered there, it's very different than the water coming out of our top today. There's a lot of, especially in America, why there's a lot of chlorine in the water. There's a lot of things that have been taken out of the water, like min minerals and other things. So I encourage people, if you for, fast 40 days and you want to do only water, then put something, add something to the water, add some minerals to the water. So your body gets some minerals. And I think it's very, very important if you take a 40 days fast and really take care of your body there. I know of several people who have done it and some people actually almost end up getting sick because they only took water from the top and not added minerals. So add something to that water to get your, give your body something to work with. Otherwise, I've been fasting 40 days several times where I've had, I, I, I decided to drink juice. So I've done food and juice. So my body got something to work with. And that is between you and God. You decide how you are going to fast. It's between you and God. Sometimes I had a 40 days fast where I was very relaxed in it. I could drink different things, juice. I could drink chocolate, uh, hot chocolate. I could even, I sometimes took, took a smoothie and some people say that is cheating. It's, it's between you and God, actually. It's between you and God. So sometimes I've been relaxed. There's other times in a long fast where I've been very strict. I'm like, haven't tasted anything else in my mouth. It had to be water for a long period or I had time with only water and juice and nothing else. So it's really something you and God decide to do. But if you decide to go into a fast and say, I'm going to do it like this, then keep on with it. Keep what you decided to do and not change it every day. But this is fasting and uh, it's really good. It's really good. The next question, what happened when you fast? If you look at the physical things first that is happening when you fast. Fasting is you clean your body from toxin and you force your cells into a lot of processes where your cells start to work. When you don't, if you only eat fast one day, you will not see a lot of, feel a lot of big physical reaction. Of course, if you only fast one day and drink a lot of water and you can do without adding things to your water if only one day, if you fast one day and drink a lot of water, the only thing you will often feel is you start to feel hungry and the cells in your body start to react. Why is there no food? We are hungry. And you can feel a little headache because the toxin is coming out of your body and you see that when you go and pee. Uh, you pee and it's very yellow often because the toxin is coming out of your body. And that is what you see if you fast for a shorter time or period that you, um, you will get rid of a lot of toxin. And it's really good to fast. It's very healthy to fast. I would actually say it like that. God has created our body uh, 
in a way that our body need break sometime to restart and fasting is helping the body to restart and it is really good and it's really healthy. If you look at the physical things that's happening in your body when you fast, let's say the first day of you can get a headache because the toxin is coming out of your body. That headache will often disappear the second day and you will be better the third day. And I encourage people to fast more than just three days. Try that because often if you only fast three days, first day you are tired, have a headache, second day you are just starting to recover, third day you just look forward to it again. But if you're fasting a longer period, let's say for, for 14 days or 20 days or 40 days, what is happening there is you go, your body goes through different processes, through different seasons. First thing, you can have times of weakness where you are very, very tired and your head is not going so fast because your body don't have the same energy. But then after those seasons, you also come into times where you are very, very clear in your mind. You have a lot of energy and like, what is happening? Because the body now is starting to eat some of the other fat in your, your body and the body don't need to use the same energy to process the food and you actually have energy. I have very time, often have like a long fast where I, this fifth or sixth, seven day, I was running around with a lot of energy and I was actually out running because I have so much energy and what shall I do with all my energy? So what I see in a longer period of fast, you have time where you, you pee a lot, the toxin coming out of your body. And in the beginning, you also do the number second, you know, because there is still food in your stomach and you need to come out. But in a longer period of time of fasting, the body start to take from your fat instead and you lose a lot of weight. In a 40 days fast, I lose around 16 kilos. That is 35 pounds. So 35 pounds is what I, with my body fat, often lose in a 40 days fast. But you sadly gain most of it again. But especially when you come out of long fast, it's very important you, you don't eat too much right away because then you make your body sit that up as a standard and you actually end up gaining more weight than you lost. But fasting is not to lose weight, it's to do something else. But the body also starts to eat of, of everything. So you can have times where you actually feel pain in your body. You, you can feel pain, you can feel weird because the body react. And, and it is hard for your body. It's, and, and there is times where, where you, you just like, what am I doing here? Like, like I feel so weak and, and then the temptation come in. And you feel tempted and you go and look at the fridge and who oh, shall I eat, shall I not eat? And, and why do I do this? And this is not the fast. Is that the, well, if, if I just eat, I'll get more energy and I can go out tell about Jesus. And, and there's a lot of things that is happening with you in a longer fast where you go through different seasons. Seasons of I'm never going to eat again. It's the best thing in my life to what am I doing? Like, like, oh, and. Oh, I like, oh, I just want food and it's a bad idea. And you look at the time and look at the calendar and, and it's all beautiful. It's all how it should be. You go up and down, up and down, up and down. And in a longer fast, you can have some good season. I often say like day seven to day 10, 14 is, have been a good season for me. And then I come to a midlife with midway crisis where like, what am I doing? That's long to 40 days. But then you come over that and you have a good season again. And those ups and downs is different from person to person where they are. But just be ready that your body is reacting. Your body is screaming for food. You are peeing a lot. If you only fast water for 40 days, your body will shut down completely. You will only do number one. You never do number two. You never really come out with anything. If you drink some juice and other things, you will go to toilet sometimes and do number two. But that will be like maybe 
one time every third day and you come out with a little rabbit poo. That is the only thing that come out. You can just get a little rabbit poo out of you and that is the only thing. That's just how it is. Understand it. There's nothing to be afraid of. It's not dangerous. People can easily survive if they are healthy and normal people can easily survive 40 days without food. Drink, I encourage you, three days is, is what we see in the Bible. Uh, of course, if you're in the presence of God and God do something unique, but I would not be part of that uh, because it can be dangerous. So I would say still listen to your body, still be wise in what you are doing. But I have more teaching on, I will put in, in the description with this video where we go more deeper also in the fasting, what is happening in your body and so on. If you want to do a longer fast, I talk much more about it, but this is just a little introduction here. We want to go deeper and say, why fast? Why do you fast? I just want to add here, when you end a small fast, you can eat most things. If you have a longer fast, I would say go slowly into the fast. Don't eat a big steak the day before the fast. Be, eat, get all of that out of your system first. So two, three days before, start to eat something light. And then when you go out of a fast, you have to be very, very careful in a longer fast. Eat very simple food. Start with some soup or something to just get the body up running. Because if you eat too much, the body is not ready for it. And you will have problems, sit on the toilet for many days and have a lot of pain. So in a longer fast, step into it slow, step out of it slow. But why fast? Why fast? Because Jesus said it. Finished. Thank you for looking this video. Goodbye. Jesus said it. That's why we do it. But um, no, he said that we should fast. Uh, but there is a reason for fasting more than just going through those seasons. And there is a reason there is more than the physical health there is with body. And there is a physical health. I think there is a healing happening in the body. I know people who are sick physical went into a fast and they actually experienced healing. Why? Because the toxin is coming out of your body. But why fast? One of the main things had to do with this, the flesh and the spirit. The flesh and the spirit is in war with each other. And fasting is helping the spirit to overcome this war. And the best way I often illustrate it is by this, two dogs. Try to imagine you have two dogs that is fighting. And they're, they're the same strength. Ah, and they're fighting. But you want the green dog to win, the spirit to win. How do you get one dog to win, win this fight when they are as strong as each other? You give this dog more food and you stop giving this dog, dog food. What is happening? By time, not the first day maybe and second day, but by time this dog become weaker and weaker and weaker and this dog becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And this dog is going to win. This is what is happening in a fast. For example, dreams. For me, I've, I've got the most clear dreams ever in a fast. Here in the voice of God, the most clear times God has spoken to me have been in a fast. It's more clear than outside a fast. Why? Because in a normal life, when you're not fasting, there is that war between your soul and your spirit or your flesh and your spirit. And there's a war going on when it comes to hearing the voice of God and come to overcome sin and other things. And what happened in a fast, this become weaker and weaker and this becomes stronger and stronger. And it's so much easier to hear God's voice. For example, the first one of the time I fasted 40 days, I needed God to speak to me. And I was fast saying, God, speak to me, speak to me, speak to me, speak to me. And, and it was so difficult. I felt I had a season in my life where I haven't heard God speak to me. And I really needed him to speak to me. And I felt that I, I like it was difficult to discern. Was it me? Was it God? Who, who was it? But then I fasted. I fasted. I fasted, I fasted, I fasted, I fasted. On the 39th day, the last day in the fast, God spoke. 
and I heard it very, very clear, and it changed my life. It became a new beginning in my life. So I would say it like this, fasting is helping your spirit to take over. Fasting is helping your spirit to take over. Also, when it comes to if you have flesh in your life and feel tempted with sin, in fasting, you crucify that flesh. You, that flesh, you deny that flesh what it wants and you feed your spirit with praying and eating the word of God. So your spirit if is more in prayer, more in worship, more in the word and your flesh is denied what it wants. So the flesh becomes weaker and weaker and weaker and your spirit becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And that is so important when it comes to overcoming your flesh in your life. It's so important when it comes to being led by the Spirit in your life, hearing the voice of the Spirit in your life. So if you need to hear God's voice, if you need to overcome flesh in your life, fasting is a secret. But I want to say that you don't experience that if you just fast over a meal here and there. Let's say many people are like, oh, I jump over lunch. You will not experience your flesh become weak by taking one day or even one day. You, that, that is really working when you take a, a longer time, a, per, a longer period of time. I will also say in, in a fast, longer fast, there is a lot of self-discipline. Because like, oh, I want food. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. No, no, I'm not, not, no, I'm listening to this. No, no, I'm hungry. No, no, I, I'm listening to this. I'm listening to my spirit, not my flesh. My flesh, I, I didn't, I self-discipline. I get my flesh to obey. My flesh understand that you are not chief in my life. I'm not living by you. I'm not following you. I'm following you. And, and there's a lot of self-discipline in fast. And I would say for me, it's almost like, let's say you go to a war. Will you go to a war with a guy who have just started the army? No, let's say like that. Let's say you are in a jungle and you need to survive in a jungle. Will you then have one with you who have just joined the army, who are very green and know nothing? Or do you want an elite soldier, one of the, the special force guys? You want the special force guys. You believe you survive more with that person. But how did that person become a special force, guys? By training and training and pushing his, pushing his limits all the time and going through things and know that he don't need to listen to his hungry food, um, stomach that's shouting. He don't need, need to listen to his body when he comes to sleep. He don't listen to his feet that is hurting because of walking. The special force people out there they become so strong. Why? Because they push the limits all the time and go through season of training. The same way, if you want to be a strong disciple who learn to walk by the spirit and not by the flesh, go into hard training. How? By fasting. Because in a fast, you take control. You, you, your body wants to live, have food. You're even looking at the fritz. <laughs> no, no, I'm not listening to you. I am listening to my spirit. I am listening to my spirit. And what you learn in a fast, you can benefit you after the fast. Because even after a fast, you have learned that I'm in control, not my flesh. I'm in control. And I use that today. So fasting is so good in so many, many ways. So we don't want to listen to the flesh. We want to listen to the spirit. And that is why we fast. So fasting had to do with this. And on another area, fasting had to do with get the spirit or unbelief out of your life to experience a breakthrough. And that's the last thing I want to share here. Matthew 17, there was a man who brought a, a young boy to Jesus because he had a demon. And to Jesus' disciple, and he had a demon. Jesus' disciple could not, not cast out that demon. And Jesus came, and he just cast the demon out. And the disciple asked, why can we not cast out that demon? Jesus said, because of your unbelief. You have unbelief in your life. If you have faith, you should say to that mountain, be casted out and it will happen. Nothing will be impossible for you if you believe. And then he continued in Matthew 17, 21. 
This kind does not come out in sip by praying and fasting. That kind is not that special kind of, of demons. That kind is their unbelief. They could not cast that demon out because of their unbelief. And they need to experience that spirit on belief. That that spirit on belief is leaving their life. Because if that spirit on belief is gone, nothing will be impossible for us. How do we get rid of those areas in our life where we have unbelief? Praying and fasting. Praying and fasting is getting rid of the spirit on belief, and that is where you see a breakthrough in your life. I often say it like this. There is times in my life where I have grown, and then I fell in, in the Lord, and then I feel like I'm coming to a wall. I feel like I cannot break through this wall. How can I break through? And then fasting have done it. For example, first time I fasted 40 days, I came to a point in my life where there was some sin in my life I was still struggling with. That was one thing. And I haven't seen healing and deliverance. And I felt like I haven't seen the power of God. I've seen my life. And I, I've been praying and reading the word, but still I was still struggling with sin. I, I didn't see the breakthroughs yet in healing and, and deliverance and the power of God. And I was like struggling. And I was like, God, why can I not break through? Then I took a 40 days fast. And that 40 days fast, I experienced a breakthrough in both areas. I overcome that sin in my life. The God, God revealed the fear of God in my life. He revealed so much. When, when in that fast, when I'm reading the word, it becomes so much more alive. And the Holy Spirit spoke like I've never experienced before. And God, God used that season to break through when it comes to healing and deliverance. So if you need a breakthrough, if there's areas, fasting is, is the secret. And you know, Jesus started his ministry with a 40 days fast. I'm just saying, if, 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 if the Son of God, Jesus, our high priest, started his ministry through a 40 day fast, and he came out of the desert in the power of the Holy Spirit, how, how can we us today believe that we can serve God and see breakthrough without fasting. I'm just saying, and Jesus said, when you fast. So if you need a breakthrough in your life, it can come with many things. One time in our life, I felt a breakthrough when it comes to be led by the Holy Spirit. I haven't seen that the way I wanted. And we are standing in a situation that was very hard. Like we needed money and we did not have, we had a house and we couldn't pay. And I was like, I needed God to speak. And there was again a 40 days fast. I was fasting 40 days and God used that fast to break through that wall that was in front of me. I needed help. I had an unbelief in that area and fasting was what helped me. I would say again, it's between you and God how you fast. I had a time in my life where God actually spoke out of the book of Esther and said, Torben, fast three days without food and drink. And that was the first time I tried that. And I took three days without food and drink. And I normally need to drink a lot when I fast to not have too much headache and get this toxin out of my system. But those three days was amazing. Like I didn't eat, I didn't drink, didn't have any fluid for three days. First day I experienced a breakthrough when it comes to a thing I've been praying for. Second day there was a breakthrough and third day, there was a breakthrough and God answered something I've been praying for for a long time, all three, those three days. I want to end up saying also, I had times in my life where I've been wanted to fast 40 days. And then I, I changed my mind midways and it became a 20 days or I gave up or, or because the fight like, oh, what, what am I doing? Is it just my idea? Is it God? Is it not God? Or what is it? And I end up giving up. Don't be too hard on yourself there. Just jump on it again later. Go into it again later. Because it is hard. It is hard to fast a longer period of time. 
it became part of my life fasting and every year since many years ago i did the first time every year i've been fasting a uh, shorter or longer period and i want to encourage you to get a life where you pray to get a life where you give to get a life where you fast that this is part of you and i will not i will encourage you in the end and say ask god what to do don't pray, God, do you want me to fast? Because Jesus already said, when you fast. I will ask God and say, God, when do you want me to fast? Pray that instead. And how long do you want me to fast? And let fasting be part of your life. And then take shorter fast, and then sometimes in your life take a longer fast. In the Bible, Jesus was out in the desert for 40 days. I have not been able to just draw away for 40 days and be in a cabin somewhere away from a family. I'm not there. I haven't ever done that. Some people can do that, but I have been still living my life, my everyday life. Uh, it's difficult to fast long period if you have a hard physical job, but I've been fast while I was working, but it was not so physical, but you can do it. But with fasting, I've been still making breakfast for the family and the kids and, and mail bottle of food with the kids and send them to school when they were younger. I, I've still been living this life and, and, and I actually chose often in a longer period of time to actually sit in the dinner table with my family and just drink water and be with them. Why? Because that is a place where we are together as a family and, and we spend time together. And, and if I'm not around them, they will not see me for that period of time and, and it's not healthy for the family. So I would say if you're married, you need to agree on it uh, with your spouse often and find a way to do it. And you find your own ways between you and God. Find a way where you feel this is what God said to me and then go for it. If you want more teaching about fasting, I put two links in together with this video where you can go in and get an even deeper foundation when it comes to the Bible and what fasting is. Otherwise, I encourage you to see the other teaching in the series, How To. We talk about how to pray. We have talked about how to set people free and how to hear the voice of God. And how to fast is a big part of that. So go into a fast. God bless you. And it is going to transform your life the same way as it has transformed my life and many other people out there. So go and fast. God bless you. Bye-bye.